Hello, this is Matthew Miller with the ZDNet Smartphones and Cell Phones blog. And today I have the pleasure of testing out the Nokia N9, which is the first and probably last Mego device. Um, so as we can see here, this is uh, the box that it comes in. It's a fairly standard kind of Nokia box. And uh, it comes with, you know, the some of the typical things like a charger and a headset. Then it also comes with a little uh, slip-on case. You can see here, it's kind of a... It's a real thin, kind of a rubber shell piece, but the device itself is absolutely gorgeous. So no matter what you can say about the device, you can't argue that it's not a fine piece of hardware. And we've already known that Nokia knows how to make a nice piece of hardware. But let's just kind of run through it here. So this is the uh, the front of the device. It's a black slab. It comes in black, uh, cyan, which is blue, and a pink magenta color. Uh, they sent along the the black one for me to take a look at for a little while. So it's a 3.9 inch, 854 by 480 pixels uh, resolution display, what they call an FWVGA. Uh, it's an AMOLED display. It has an anti-glare polarizer and Gorilla Glass on it. And it's kind of hard to see in both the, the pictures I took and the video, but it's a um, it's a beautiful piece of glass. I mean, very smooth. You can just feel it, and it's curved. It's uh, it won't show up in this video, I'm sure. But you just have to kind of hold it to see it. But it's curved glass, and um, when you have the device on, you'll be able to see that the screen just kind of blends right into the side of the form. It's plastic, but it's a very high quality plastic. Um, the feel of this device is just amazing in your in your hand. It just feels feels perfect. Um, it's a very simple device. I mean, there's no buttons on the front. There's no home button or anything else. It's all a touch interface that I'll show you here in a few minutes. Uh, that's just a clock um, that's on the screensaver there. So, so there's this device. It's all screen in the front. There's some proximity sensor up here. That's a front-facing camera, I believe, right there, but I haven't been able to figure out a way to turn it on. Um, over on the right side, we have uh, the power and the lock button, this little button here, and then the volume buttons which can also be used to zoom in and out on the camera. On the bottom you have a uh, speaker. On the left side is nothing at all. On the top, on the top we have a couple doors here um, and the headset jack. That's a three and a half millimeter headset jack and there's a couple of doors. This first one you just uh, you press down on this little button here and it pops up the door for the uh, for the micro USB port for syncing and charging and that kind of thing. And then you slide this one in. Let's see if I can do this here. You slide it over and then it releases the uh, micro SIM card holder and then pop it back in there. And slide that port down that's well hidden there. And then on the back we have the uh, 8 megapixel Carl Zeiss lens. Uh, it has an f2.2 aperture lens. It takes 720p video has dual little LEDs right there. Um, and the device also is a pentaband device, so it works on 3G with T Mobile and ATT in the US uh, and then around the world. It's also quad band GSM, has you know Bluetooth 2.1, Wi Fi, GPS, uh, proximity sensor, accelerometer, compass, all that stuff. And also <clears throat> has NFC, and Nokia is doing some things with NFC, such as a touching to a headset to pair it and, and some other things like that. So it's all running. Oh, one more thing. The internal memory, there is no micro SD slot as I walked around and there's no removable battery. I mean, everything's sealed up. This is a very sealed up device and I don't know, you can kind of see here there's some angles. It just feels so good in your hand. It's, it's a really nice form factor device. And we've seen rumors that they may have a Windows phone device with this same form factor. And if that's the case, I mean, I'll, I'll buy it in a second. Excuse me. So memory-wise, it comes with either 16 gigabytes or 64. This particular model is a 64 gigabyte model, and it has one gig of RAM to go along with that. Now, this device, the Nokia N9, runs Mego 1.2 Harmattan. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right or not. Which is kind of a um, well, which is the evolution. Actually, I'll show you a couple of devices. So this is quickly in comparison to the Nokia N9. So about the same height as the N9, a little bit wider and a bit thicker than the uh, than the N8, excuse me. The N9 is a 
a bit wider and thicker than the N8. And then the N9 is a distant relative to the Nokia N900. Now this is the N900, which ran MAMO or MIMO, however you want to pronounce it. And this was, uh, I, I still love this device. I mean, it's thick, it's kind of clunky, things like that. But uh, the services that it had integrated and the, the multitasking that was on it, I mean, it was a very good device ahead of its time. Just the hardware was a bit clunky, kind of old school. I still like that device. And the N9 builds upon the N900, um, as we'll take a look at here in the uh, the operating system with uh, the Migo. So let's go ahead and uh, we tap the uh, tap the button, and then we just swipe. Now, what you'll see here is it's a it's a combination of both uh, uh, Mamo and kind of WebOS looking, where there's a lot of swiping uh, from outside the display. Kind of a, I guess BlackBerry Playbook is like that as well. So we just uh, swipe across. Now there's three main displays here. This is the application, uh, kind of the center of the three displays, uh, the launcher, right? And, you know, there's all the different applications that are loaded. Some are preloaded. Uh, I've got some from, <coughs> from the OB store. You simply, uh, you can move things around. You simply tap and hold, and then you can just uh, slide it over when you want to move something, and then say done when you're ready to. So you can see there's the 6x4 grid, and there's I haven't found a way to like customize uh, sizing of it or, or changing that around. So that's kind of the default grid, and that's the application long, launcher. And then if you were to swipe uh, from left to right, you'll see that this is the, uh, the feeds. I guess it's called the events and stay in the loop. Uh, new notifications can pop, will pop up above this. This other thing here is, is the feeds, is Twitter, Facebook other kind of status updates that you uh, you might have um, and you can tap refresh and refresh that page as well then again you sl swipe back actually I'd, if I swipe yeah okay so it does loop so I can swipe back if I want and go back to launcher and if I swipe the other way I can go to the um, multitasker so this is similar to how <clears throat> the N900 had it where it would show uh, little thumbnails of the, the running applications that you had and things like that um, kind of similar to webOS as well and uh, these are all applications that I had uh, opened and running you see the cameras on standby some things will go to standby and pause so we see there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six I have twenty seven things uh, currently running on uh, on Migo here, and uh, I'm just kind of won't run through them all right now because it's just kind of a first look. But we have email there, we got some Reuters news, we've got the user guide, we've got a game here. I'll show the game in a second. We've got some of the services availability: Google Talk, Facebook, Skype. That's one thing I loved about the N900 was the the Skype and Facebook integration where you could chat and uh, make calls right from there. Uh, the wireless settings, some calendar, web browser, <clears throat> Facebook, um, things like that. So let's uh, let's run through a few of these. So those are the three main interfaces, and you can see, as I missed, it, it actually just loops too. So three main displays is all you got to remember. And then if you're uh, if you're in something, so I'll go to one of some. I'll go to one of these things here. Um, let's see. Go into settings, say. So these are our settings, and there's there's just several different. Uh, as you can see, there's there's quite a number of settings, right? Now, if we're in any kind of application, I want to go back, right? You simply just swipe up, and it goes back to where I was. Or, I believe you can go anywhere. Yeah, swipe from anywhere off the display into the center, and it takes you back to where you started with on one of the three main screens. <clears throat> uh, I'll show you the camera here. <coughs> I haven't figured out how to access the front camera, but uh, the rear camera is an 8 megapixel camera. We can do portrait or landscape, of course. Um, we tap over here. You can see there's a bunch of different camera settings, red eye and different exposure settings. It's a face detection, geotag, you know, that kind of thing. And it's very fast, right? So we come over here, we take a picture.
as you can see, you can take a picture and, and move right on. Similar to how uh, the HTC Amaze 4G that I just uh, took a look at, that thing also flies like this um, between taking pictures and not taking pictures. And then if you, then if you go back to your pictures, you can see uh, similar to what we've seen on Symbian before, right? We, we can tap on the share button. Um, a bunch of different options will come up for sharing that picture. Now one thing you'll notice is some of it uh, does seem to lag a little bit and I don't know if that's because I have so many applications open but uh, I can take care of that. So there's Facebook and Flickr and email and NFC. If you have another NFC uh, device you can tap them together and, and share the picture and things like that. <coughs> okay, so that's the camera. Uh, here's a just a trailer. It's uh, the Cowboys Nailing This trailer. I'm just going to show you the video player. There's the, there's the interface there of the uh, the player. Videos look good. It's a nice high resolution screen. Let's see. Come over here. I want to show you a few other things on the interface. Facebook. If we tap up here, you can see this Facebook is reminiscent of uh, many other mobile platforms. You can go to your feeds, your friends, your photos, chat. You come here and you can you can scroll up and down and look at. Uh, Look at your feeds. Let's see, I want to go to the browser as well. So here's the browser. Here's the uh, <clears throat> smartphones and cell phone site. So if we double tap in, we can scroll in. You can pinch and zoom. You can go over here to uh, landscape mode as well. If you tap up in the corner, you can see you could open the new window share the page, add to the apps, which uh, adds a shortcut to the, uh, the application launcher, and subscribe to the feed, and that would show up in your events area if you want to just go ahead and subscribe to that. Um, tap and hold on links, share the link, copy the link, open a new window. Actually, I haven't tried copy-paste yet. It's still early in this review. Let's see where I can actually uh, copy and paste it an actual text there, but I'll have to mess around with it some more. I've only been uh, using it here for a couple hours, it just came today, so pardon me and my ignorance if I have some ignorance in there. It does have a Twitter application, Facebook application was loaded on board. Go to Twitter, if you pull down, it's kind of an official, I don't know if it's an official or not, but you pull down, it refreshes. You can bounce between your ads and, and everything else. Come over here, you can do favorites, retweets. Showed you Facebook already, it's Twitter. Oh, let's show, let's show you gaming too. So this is... Uh, Turn the music down a bit so we can play. Alright, so let me try racing again. This game, I believe, is mainly steering. It's not so much acceleration or braking. Right, there's some braking there. That's that. Graphics are nice and fluid. Swipe it out. Pauses the game. Goes back into the multitasker here. Which is a nice interface. Okay, so that's about it for that. You know, it's got all your uh, typical apps here. We got the contact search, web browser, messages, uh, email. There's OV Music, which does nothing for the U.S. Oh, Maps. Um, I believe I showed that. It has OV Maps on board. What did that say? There we go. It has OV Maps on board. Um, I think it's four point something or other version. So let's go ahead and let that start up. What I'll do at the end here is I'll I'll restart it so you can see how fast it is uh, from uh, from initial launch. 
So there's OV maps. You can pinch and zoom, scroll around. All the typical uh, things you want to be doing on, uh, on OV maps. And you can also get maps and, and download them directly so it supports that whole. That was always a weakness kind of in the, the MAMO platform was it never really had OV maps integration. Now you have OV maps online and offline support um, in there. Wi-Fi hotspot is integrated in there, which is great to see. AccuWeather, it has Angry Birds Magic, it's called. Uh, Skype integration, YouTube, all the things you could kind of expect in a phone. It doesn't have a huge ecosystem, so pretty much whatever you get on this phone is, is pretty much uh, what you're going to end up with. There is the OV store with some apps, um, but I, I imagine it's going to be kind of a limited, uh, limited deal. Now, if we can go in there and add accounts, you can see you can add mail for exchange, Skype, Google, which is Gmail for mail, chat, and calls, Facebook, Twitter, Nokia account, <clears throat> Caldav, Flickr, Picasa, SIP, YouTube. So similar to what we saw on uh, the N900, same with the accounts is what we have on the N9. So let me go ahead and pause it and I'll restart it and, and show you how it uh, performs from uh, no apps running. I restarted it, and uh, so there, I did have, I think, 27 apps running. Now there's, there's just a clock running at this point. And uh, I wanted to show you a couple more things. So again, similar to WebOS, what we have here is a, a quick launch bar. So if I drag my finger from below the display onto the display and hold it, you'll see a quick launch bar up here. And then I can go to make a call, uh, have a conversation, take a picture, or go to the web browser just by, uh, just by doing that. So you just drag up, hold it. There it goes, quick launch bar. Now also, up at the top, uh, let's see if it does it on this screen. Yeah, so up here, you see there's also a uh, status menu. So we tap on this, <clears throat> and here's where we can jump between different profiles, silent beep ringing, adjust the volume, see our connectivity, and also see our availability for uh, some of those other services. And that's just the top status menu, and then the bottom. I don't believe it does it here, but let's see. No, it doesn't do it here, the quick launch bar. Um, but that does appear otherwise. Now, I was showing you the clock because what I wanted to show you was, uh, say I go to do alarm, it uh, uses this in uh, several spots too for the time selector. It's just a spinning uh, circle. <coughs> and then the seconds around the outside, which is kind of a cool little fast little interface, much faster than like the, the Apple dial deal, you know, spinning your finger there to get uh, adjustments and all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty much it for uh, the Nokia the Nokia N9. Uh, it's a very fast device. Uh, beautiful hardware. I did have some pausing when I got to like 27 open apps, but that's kind of crazy anyway. Um, there's You can see the weather's up there now on my feeds. Uh, it's a snappy device. It has a limited ecosystem. It's not coming to the United States anytime soon. Uh, so you would have to import it, um, probably a thousand bucks or something. And, I mean, it's a beautiful piece of hardware. Um, I don't know if it's worth uh, worth that for. It's more of a hobbyist type of phone that uh, those guys that are just big fans of Nokia and uh, and the Migo platform. Thanks for watching.